<laughs> We've got ourselves something really special today, guys. A new collab has just dropped with a whole bunch of fantastic, very talented builders, and it's all about the Mari, the underwater wave of Bionicle. So I'm going to break this up into a few different videos because there's a lot of different builders and a lot of different mocks within this collab. So stay tuned for probably a month's worth of content here because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of incredible builds here and they're all awesome. I'll still be doing my HF Feb stuff, so don't you worry. But hey, if you need that Bionicle kick during the month of, of Hero Factory, uh, you're in the right spot. So let's dive into a bunch of the Titans from the Mari Wave, and let's begin with the very first one here. This is by your pal VB, and this is Nocturne. So such a beautiful mock here. It's kind of Tentacle City. There's a lot of different tentacles going on and it works so well. I mean, there's obviously that sort of octopus aesthetic or Cthulhu aesthetic, I suppose you could say as well, uh, which is very fitting for a, you know, a bad guy villain character in this underwater world. So you can really get away with it here. It's nice. Um, but yeah, great to see uh, tentacles in all sorts of different colors and lovely to see how he's reimagined the whip arm that Nocturne originally had here and made it just this big mesh of tentacles almost like it's been chopped off and it's sort of regrowing of sorts um it's really really cool as is the face on this mock that nice sort of uh, toothy smile there combined with some very interesting pieces these almost like egg splatter pieces they're from a uh, lego city police set that only recently came out i believe it was last year uh and it's meant to be sort of like splattered ice cream but this piece has been uh, it has appeared in other colors as well so it's sort of like a kind of liquid splatter of sorts it's even been an egg as well well, so it's a variety of different things, but it works very nicely here to form this, uh, again, more kind of aquatic looking face. It almost sort of looks like uh, like scales that you might see on some sort of um, underwater monster of sorts. So uh, very nice use of a very modern piece there. Really, really cool. Uh, I also enjoy these large uh, Technic dark blue panel pieces that are used on the top of the upper legs there because they very nicely integrate in with the torso. Uh, some very nice shaping there, just sort of taking advantage of the natural curves of those pieces and having it kind of butt up against uh, the other parts of the body that's uh, just really nicely done and all over just some beautiful organic smooth shaping all throughout this it looks like a Lovecraftian sea monster it's smooth and sinister it's everything that you want in an underwater villain mock this is a brilliant take on Nocturne next up is old mate Cody Avery builds and this is Gadunka modified angler I love this. So the original story for Gadunka in the actual Bionicle lore was that he was, uh, I'll just read it off Cody's page, once a common Rahi, now mutated and enhanced by the Mask of Life. Uh, and I think that was such a cool concept. I think the idea was he was this tiny little dude that got mutated into this big dude. And you can kind of almost see that a little bit more clearly on this mock here. If you focus just purely on the blue and the sort of trans blue and glow and dark pieces there, it looks like a sort of angular fish of sorts that's been modified with these robotic limbs. And I love that. I, it kind of makes sense that if the Mask of Life was going to mutate something, that it would get robotic advancements, right? Because it's the world of Bionicle. Everything's robotic or sort of biomechanical. I suppose, but you know, it, it, from a certain point of view, it makes sense and it works. Uh, and so I think this is a really nice alternate take on Gadunka. And it's cool that you can kind of see the before and after uh, and how it's sort of like the two kind of coming together in that sense with this mock. It's a very creative take on the concept. Uh, I really like that. It's always nice when mocks really integrate parts of the story into them. It's, uh, it's, it's nice when you can see people have done their research. It's cool. There's a really nice piece being used here. It's sort of on the little kind of like tail at the very back of the head and sort of like whiskers on the front almost. Uh, it's this piece that comes on a Ninjago collectible minifigure. And I guess it was supposed to be some sort of like ornate commander headdress sort of cape thing I don't know uh, but it was this interesting kind of plastic cape piece here and they look very much like fins uh, and the sort of translucent nature of it ties very nicely uh, with all those kind of glow-in-the-dark pieces there that are being used on the sort of uh, you know head here of sorts and uh, just on that as well, obviously Gadunka, Nocturne, like we just saw, uh, but other Baraki and a couple other different sets uh, from the Mari Wave had a lot of those awesome glow-in-the-dark pieces, which really give that sort of like bioluminescent underwater vibe, uh, and they're perfect, uh, just amazing pieces, and uh, yeah, perfect for this underwater feel. Uh, so hey, you know, if, if you're looking to, to get a few pieces, invest in these, or you know, maybe you already had a bunch of the Mari Wave, don't be afraid to... Um, 
you know, pull your resources and get all of those different glow-in-the-dark pieces together uh, and put them into a mock, like, much like Cody has done here, because it just looks so cool. And uh, I think the color of that is so fitting for this sort of underwater menacing sea creature. It's it's really, really clever. The robotic aesthetic has been perfectly nailed, and I love the eyes as well on Gadunker. Very sinister, very cool. On to the next one now. Uh, this is by our friend Roses Must Build, and this is Lezovic. Uh, so now we're going to some of the good guys, but this was technically a Titan set in that sense, but it's also a Toa, but you know what, it's a, it, it still counts. Right off the bat, when we take a look at the back of this mark, we can see that he's, I don't know, maybe wearing like a diving suit and he's got an interesting sort of pattern stitched onto it or something, or he's got a back tattoo, I don't really know, but either way, I think it's very fun and very clever. Uh, obviously, this isn't an official sticker or anything, I believe this is a custom job in that sense there, but uh, what a fun idea, you know? I mean, if, if that's something that you really want to do is, you know, paint your pieces or, uh, you know, make custom stickers or even use official stickers and stuff like that, uh, it can really add a, a bit of fun to a mark. Uh, so I really, really like that detail. It, uh, it works very nicely here. I also like seeing this custom version of Lezovic's mask, obviously not actually using the official mask piece, which I believe isn't cheap these days, unfortunately. Uh, but that's a nice alternative. If you don't have the mask for the character you want to build, just build a custom version of it using pre-existing pieces to sort of recreate the feel of it, because it just looks so nice here. And I think the way that um, Sandra has built this here it looks a little bit more kind of like a vintage diving helmet of sorts. At least that's maybe the vibe I'm getting there. Um, or even more just like a modern diving helmet to a degree. Um, yeah, I, I like that. So uh, nice that it evokes elements of the original, but uh, dips into to other areas of the underwater world uh, with your know, man-made technology and stuff like that. So yeah, very smart, very cool. Especially if he is wearing a bit of a diving suit, I guess it really makes sense. Uh, I love the sort of elbow uh, kind of connection here on Lezovic. Uh, this has been built with some of these rounded plate pieces and some of these pneumatic tube pieces that you often see used on like finger designs and things like that. Uh, it's a very nice connection and it's a great way to kind of integrate a bit more system in with your CCBS and Bionicle pieces and stuff like that. Uh, and I've never actually physically tried this out, but it looks like it's a sturdy enough connection uh, and it's a pretty clever connection too. So uh, great way of doing that there and a nice way to transition pieces. Uh, and then I love how he's approached uh, Lezovic's sort of speeder here. It's very similar to the original, but kind of tied it up and smooth smoothed out. Uh, and uh, great to see these engine pieces here with this uh, light bluish gray uh, barrel piece, which I believe is exclusive to the most recent Star Destroyer set in that color. Uh, and again, not a cheap piece, but man, it's uh, it works really well. So that's pretty exciting. So a lovely take on Lezovic. Let us move over now to Hydraxon. This is built by Poor Disadvantaged. So this is another one that I think dips into the backstory in a really fun way. We can see some lovely cute orange highlights on this mock here. Now, now, the reason for that is because if you read some of the story on Hydraxon, he was originally this little Matoran, and once again, he was, uh, you know, enhanced by the Mask of Life to uh, look a lot cooler. And, I mean, Hydraxon's one of my favorite sets. He looks really cool. Uh, but I love the idea of introducing a bit of yellow into the color scheme, because I remember reading that as a kid and being like, oh, that guy turns into Hydraxon? He looks nothing like him. Um, except for maybe the weapons, I guess, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I like that there's a little bit of consistency between the two there. If you're going to introduce another color, it's a, a very uh, fitting one to do, that's for sure. Uh, I love seeing uh, those daggers that we were just talking about before all along the back and also having one in his hand there as well, you know, to tie back to the original. But also the actual set itself had a lot of those uh, sort of dagger-like pieces on there. And I think that was always kind of the idea with Hydraxon is he was kind of a weapons master of sorts. So it's nice to see him with just a beautiful array of weapons that almost forms this sort of like like kind of like crown or crest on his back there it just kind of frames the mock nicely um, I don't think they're quite wings of sorts but uh, you know certainly if someone's guarding the pit because Hydraxon of course was the jailer of the pit if you see a dude with just an array of uh, daggers along his back you're probably not going to want to break into the prison that's uh, down there within the Bionicle law uh, so a very fitting inclusion that's for sure now I mentioned how he was the jailer of the pit I love some of the accessories that he's got here on his belt you can see little locks a really big key a bit more in the scale of Bionicle. That's a, a nice way of approaching that key design. Uh, and then some of these wire pieces, like a little sort of like belt of sorts. That's a, another detail that, again, ties into the backstory in some beautiful ways. And uh, it just makes the mock feel that more like kind of fleshed out. And you, you get a bit of like almost like world building there. You, you learn about the character. It's fun. So I implore you, if you're going to do re revamps of pre-existing characters, read Biosector, read the Bionicle wiki, learn about the character and see what elements from the story you can put into the mock. Because we've seen a few 
few examples of that now, and it's just beautiful. So yeah, some of these other cloth highlights and different things are awesome. He's got a gun blade as well. How very exciting. Uh, a lot of fantastic stuff on this Hydraxon revamp, that's for sure. On to the next one. This is by Daniel Brickson, a, a man who lived in Chicago. I used to live there very, very briefly, but I'm an Australian man these days. Uh, and um, uh, this is Kazani as well. So if we're talking more backstory stuff, Kazani was uh, a character with a lot of lore in the Bionicle world. Uh, but most notably, he was mutated by the mutagen in the pit, uh, the area where a lot of the story of the Toamari took place. Uh, and so he had a very different look in his official set appearance. Uh, and it's lovely to see that kind of translated with this monk here. I think specifically on the head, it looks pretty mutated. Uh, I mean, even like the spikes on the back there, the fact that they're red, and uh, this this weird sort of like scaly effect with some of those ninja, um, not Ninjago, Nexo Knight shield pieces there. Uh, the fact that he seems to almost have like two pairs of eyes. He's got those little red bits, but there's also that little yellow bit poking out there. Uh, and then he's got that really sort of spiky dragon mouth there, which, uh, I don't know, it kind of has a bit of a mutated vibe to it. Uh, so it's nice to see that very effectively conveyed in the head design. Uh, and it's also nice to see him with a bit more of a dinosaur aesthetic here. I think it uh, surprisingly works really well. Um, dinosaur Karzani is not something I thought I'd see today, but I'm excited that I'm seeing it. Um, I also like his little kind of ribcage design here as well. The original set kind of had something similar, I suppose, or at least those sort of larger um, kind of like claw kind of appendage things. I don't really know what those were, but you can kind of see similar ones here. Uh, but still, it's a nice ribcage using some of the Pahatu Nuva uh, weapon pieces there. It uh, very effectively re resembles a ribcage of sorts. Uh, and then uh, we were at Tentacle City before, now we're at Mask City. Uh, we can see a whole bunch of different mask pieces being used here. Uh, we can see uh, the... Um, Matau mask being used, uh, the Hordika and the traditional one, both on the crotch uh, as well as on the sort of upper legs there as well. Uh, and then the Paraka mask pieces are being used on the hands there. Those Paraka masks, though, are the ones that came on the canisters, not on the official uh, Zaktan set there. Um, but uh, great to see some masks beautifully integrated in with the rest of the design. They look smashing. Uh, I also love these chains using some of these Exoforce robot arm pieces here. Such a helpful piece. Uh, but making little rings with them and then just sort of uh, stringing them together like that to form the rings of a chain. What a, a great way of recreating the fact that the set actually had chains on it. But uh, spicing it up a little bit and playing with the scale, it looks gorgeous. Uh, so a wonderfully built creation here, Daniel. You've done a fantastic job. Now we go to Mutated Blue. Brutaka, and this is by Space Glove. So you might be like, which Mari set was this? Brutaka was a Nika. That's not quite correct. Well, yes and no. To quote Space Glove here on the Instagram post, he says this is based on an absolutely legitimate set. Dot, 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 dot. So here's the set in question. Uh, there was a Pit Brutaka set. Or was there? I still don't believe it existed. However, I've spoken to people who have sworn to me that they saw it in a Toys R Us. Who knows? Could be tomfoolery about. Or it could be legitimate. Who knows? Uh, but this was a sort of rumory thing that was going around at the time. And even still, whether or not it was true, it's a cool idea, especially combining some of the Karapa armor with him and stuff. It's a really sick concept. Um, so hey, maybe you could build your own take on Pit Brutaka. It's a really sick idea. Uh, but lovely to see a very different take on him in this collab. A surprisingly fitting uh, mock uh, in this collab. Um, I love his goofy face. It's so weird and wonderful. Um, the fact that it is uh, maybe using some, some modified pieces, those teeth at the very bottom there, the little silver ones poking out, they appear to just be sort of shoehorned in there and, and shoved in. Uh, but, you know, it gets the job done, and the fact that he's got big goofy eyes and a big old mouth is just a bit of fun. It's, it's a, you know, yes, a lot of these mocks so far that we've seen have been really sinister and evil and scary, but it's nice that this guy just looks like he would be yelling in the most crazy voice and just uh, gallivanting through the uh, underwater world uh, in some very funny ways. Uh, so, you know, you don't always have to take your mock super seriously, and that's always fun, especially because he's got a little squid friend. That is such an adorable mock using those new gear pieces, those weird almost like splatter gears. It looks like blood splatter or you know, some sort of liquid splattering on the floor. Using those as little, little baby tentacles, he's adorable. I love the idea of a little squid companion for him. And speaking of squids, I love the fact that he has redone the squid launcher, one of the infamous awful squid launchers. Never was a fan of them. They just didn't fire. They were awful. 
Uh, but they were fun. They were still cool. I'm sure some people liked them. But uh, this is a really fun take on it, building an actual sort of proper squid and a bit more of a really elaborate kind of crossbow here that looks magnificent. Uh, and then I love seeing uh, some kind of modified pieces here. We can see it on the top of the legs there. It looks like the Lord of the Rings ring. However, that only appears in chrome, and here it is in pearl gold instead. Uh, it could be uh, some of the sort of like piping that's been cut up, and some of the ridges being cut up and put in there. Uh, or it could just be a sort of painted modified piece or whatever it is. But still... That little nice ring detail there uh, is a nice sort of uh, little finishing touch on the leg design. Uh, and the feet are also interesting, using some of those blades to form these sort of snazzy boots. Uh, and then what appears to be a third-party shield piece, I think that's Brick Warrior, I'm not too sure. It's not an official piece that's uh, just sort of over the top of it there. It looks cool. But yeah, great to see a version of Pit Brutaka that's a little bit goofy, a little bit fun. And oh baby, the best one, we're saving it till the end. It's by Gamma Ray, and this is Maxilos and Spinax. So what was one of the coolest sets ever, I still love that set, uh, has been revamped in beautiful fashion here. Uh, so let's focus on Maxilos for now. Now, and we'll get to Spinax at the end. Um, yes, so the interesting thing is there appears to be this sort of glow to his weapon here. Now you may be like, oh, that's some fancy Photoshop editing done by the brilliant Buttloaf who edited a lot of these photos. You absolutely killed it with these. These are some fantastic edits that just bring out a lot in these mocks. They're gorgeous. Uh, but no, those are in fact actual lights in there. Uh, so yeah, rare to see actual lights within a Bionicle. It's maybe a bit more common with your system mocks. Not a lot of people do it with Bionicle, but man, it looks really, really cool. And I hope you bring this to Brick Fair or something, because I'd love to see it actually lit up in person. I'm sure it would really, really shine. Um, yeah, so that's a very fun, interesting detail. Uh, I also love uh, a lot of the shaping throughout this mock. Like, the torso itself is beautiful, uh, especially with some of those larger kind of pneumatic piston pieces in there. Uh, that's a, a really nice use of that piece there, and uh, certainly makes the torso look just striking and interesting. Uh, I love seeing the Nitro Blast headpiece here uh, on the uh, upper leg there. That nice pop of red really um, uh, just sort of... It's just very fitting for this mock. It looks cool. And, you know, seeing that head design integrated with other sort of CCBS pieces and things, uh, it just creates some beautiful shaping. Uh, and then a few different bits of tubing kind of wrapped around the arm there. Kind of looks like pipes of sorts. Maybe that's a way that he's breathing and stuff like that. A very fitting detail. Uh, but I also enjoy seeing the little antenna on the top of his mask there. Uh, the little, um, like, kind of ski stick thing. There's probably a name for that, but I don't do much skiing. It's, uh, there's not much snow in Australia, so I don't know what that's called specifically. But still, that's a nice piece and it works well for the antenna there. Especially because now when we go to Spinax here, we can see that same antenna on the top of his head. I love that. I love the idea that, you know, Spinax could be a few kilometers away or something, but they tune into their little antenna and he gives them commands and he does his evil bidding. That's so clever. I love that little detail. Um, great way to kind of uh, very subtly tie the two together and make them more of a pair in this sense. Now, there appear to be some lights on Spinax as well. The eyes seem to be glowing. I don't believe that's edits. I think that's also actually lit up. Uh, but the crazy back, these like gold wires, which also appear to have some lights in them, such a cool aesthetic. I love that, you know, originally Spinax didn't really have that sort of pop of gold, but man, it just elevates this mock so much more introducing that. Uh, and the idea of uh, these, these uh, just array of different wires here sort of forming this uh, kind of curvature to his back there, uh, it makes this seem so much more accurate to actual uh, like anatomy of uh, a dog-like creature here. Um, so yeah, it's just some brilliant shaping and a brilliant recreation of uh, actual anatomy there. I'm sure a lot of research was put into that a lot of trial and error to get that perfect, but it's been absolutely beautifully done. Uh, and then I love seeing the inclusion of a few more of these Spinac heads uh, on the uh, upper legs and the back legs there. Um, that's just great. as some nice consistency in textures because, of course, it's the same piece multiple times. You, your repetition and your part spamming is always a great way uh, to make mocks just uh, look cool. I also love the little detail of you can see some sort of like red tubing that's been covered by some of those sort of silver kind of like cog ring pieces there. I love the fact that there's that little implication of a, a slight hint of more color or actual kind of wiring that makes up the sort of circuitry or inner details that, uh, you know, that are Spinax there. But the fact that it's kind of covered up with silver there, that's a really nice detail. Um, but yeah, all in all, a crazy cool anatomy with this. It's so menacing. And suddenly now Spinax becomes this real sort of like feature point of uh, these two here. Like the original set, he can get a little drowned out by the awesomeness of Maxilos. But uh, with that pop of gold and everything, he just 
is oh i i love this mock this is so cool so fantastic job to all the builders in this collab and there's much more to come so if you love these stay tuned for more but if you can't wait check the links in the description and see some of the other stuff that these builders have done and other stuff within this collab as well uh, these builders know their stuff they're very good um, additionally in the description is links to the submission email so if you have a collab that you and your friends are going to do or have already done and you want me to cover it I'll see what I can do uh, and if you have submissions for HF Feb chuck them into that submission email and I'll see what I can do about putting them in a future episode thank you very much for watching happy building and bye for now